Okay, so now we're going to talk about sensitivity and specificity. And these are ways that you can use to measure the accuracy of a test. So let's say we have this population of people, some of which are afflicted with a disease, and I've represented that with these red dots on their head. But we don't know which one of these people have the disease and which ones don't. So we create a test. We design a blood test that we can perform on all these people and we get results uh, that are positive on certain people. I'm going to depict the positive ones with the blue circle. Now this test that we've created here would be a perfect test in which anybody who has a disease the test tells us and anyone who, tell, who doesn't have the disease is, the test is negative for them. So whenever the test is positive, we know that the person has a disease. And whenever the test is negative, we know that they don't. Now, in reality, there's no such thing as a perfect test. And so tests can be wrong. So here in this case, you could see the test failed to pick up this person who had the disease, and it inaccurately, it, it erroneously picked up this person as having the disease, but in reality, they don't have the disease. So this is how most tests really are. And we will use the uh, calculations of sensitivity and specificity to describe the accuracy of a test. But now, there are really four scenarios here that we need to go over. Let's get some terminology down. First, this, patient, this person right here, they have the disease and the test was positive. So the test was positive and they truly had the disease. Now, let's take another one. This person over here, they don't have the disease, and the test was negative. So this person, the test was negative, and they truly don't have the disease. So that's a true negative. So these are instances when the test is performing well, our true positives and our true negatives. Now, what about these two cases where the test went wrong? In this one, this guy right here, the test was positive, that's what that blue ring there is for. So the test was positive, but the patient actually did not have the disease, so that was a false positive. And now in this person, you could see there's no blue ring here. The test was negative for this person, negative, but it really should have been positive, so that was a false positive. So here are the times when the test is wrong, our false negatives and our false positives. So this is the first concept you want to get. There is no such thing as a perfect test. All of them are going to make mistakes. Sometimes a mistake is going to be a false negative where it fails to pick up something. Or it's going to be a false positive where it erroneously picks up something that it shouldn't have. Now let's look at the characteristics of sensitivity and then specificity. So I think it makes a little bit more sense to first kind of put this in the frame of, of uh, looking at a test that has a hundred percent sensitivity. And what does sensitivity mean? Sensitivity means the test is sensitive, it has the ability to detect something. That's when it's sensitive. So let's say here now we have a test with a hundred percent sensitivity. It has the ability to detect whenever patients have the disease. So the test is always positive whenever someone has a disease. You can see though that even though this is 100% sensitive, there are some mistakes being made. Look, it falsely picked up this one, and it falsely picked up this guy right here. So we do have a couple of false positives. Now, let's say we told everybody whose test was negative, you can go home, get out of here. So everyone with a negative test is now leaving, leaving only the patients who have positive tests behind. What happened here? Well, we could be pretty sure with our 100% sensitive test, that we would not be sending home anyone with the disease. So we feel pretty confident that if anyone has a negative disease, I'm sorry, if anyone has a negative test, they don't have the disease. So saying that we have concluded that someone doesn't have the disease, in our medical parlance we call that we've ruled them out. So for a highly sensitive test, when that test is negative, we've ruled them out for disease, or this spells snout. But even though this test was 100% sensitive and we didn't send home anyone with a disease, it's still not a perfect test. Look, we unnecessarily kept two people who didn't need to stay. We could have kept sent these people home, but our test was positive for them. 
So it's not a perfect test. Let's call these guys back into the room and look at this another way. So we know right now that this test is 100% sensitive, but we had some errors. Now, this is also a 100% sensitive test. And so is this. And so is this. Now what would happen here? Look at this. Everybody tested positive. Would we be sending home anybody with the disease? No, because we would keep everyone. Everyone's test is positive. But look at all these people that we kept unnecessarily. Those are false positives. We need a test that is more specific than this. So now let's look at it from the other side. Let's look at a 100% specific test. So what that means is that whenever we say that a test is negative, we're going to ask all of these people to leave again, and we will keep all the patients who had a positive test. And so what happened here with our 100% specific test is that we have not kept anyone who didn't need to stay. No one has been unnecessarily kept here. But what, who have we sent home? Well, we have unfortunately sent home one person with a negative test. So he had a negative test, but it probably, it, but it should have been positive. So it was a false negative. So we're sending home one false negative. So a 100% specific test has no false positives. And a 100% sensitive test, let me go back to the previous example, has no false negatives. So you may have some false positives, but you're not going to have false negatives with 100% sensitive. And with a 100% specific test, you may have some false negatives, but you're not going to have any false positives. So let's look at it like we did in the previous example. So all the patients who had a positive test they have the disease. With a 100% specific test, we're sure of that. In fact, and when we, in our medical parlance, when we say someone, we've determined someone has a disease, we say that they have ruled in. So here we can say that a 100% specific test, when it is positive, will rule in the disease, or this spells spin. Now let's get all these patients back and look at the limitations of specificity. So we already said that this would be a 100% specific test, but so would this, and so would this. So here is a test in which it's never positive. So it's impossible to have a false positive if it's never positive, but, uh, and so it's 100% specific. But this test is again useless because it doesn't distinguish anything for us. So we need to have a balance between sensitivity and specificity. So in reality, we're going to have, never going to have a test that's going to have 100% sensitivity or 100% specificity because there is no perfect test. Instead, we're going to have sometimes when it's correct in picking up the patients with the disease, and sometimes when it's correct in excluding patients who don't have the disease, and sometimes when it's wrong, like here where we have a patient who doesn't have the disease and we missed it. I mean someone who does have the disease and we missed it. And over here we're someone who doesn't have the disease and we picked them up as having the disease. So there is a way of quantifying this, and in the next video we're going to look at how you calculate sensitivity and specificity. But from this video, I wanted you to t pick up two things, and that was spin and snout. Uh, that when you have a highly specific test, when it's positive, it helps us rule in the disease. And when you have a highly sensitive test, when it's negative, it helps us rule out the disease. All right, we'll see you in the next video.